No, come on, please, please. You spoiled me. You spoiled me. No, we'll fight it a little bit. Don't. Please. We have a hard, we have a hard out. We have the late show as well. So it's. Please sit down. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Portland. Looking very weird tonight. Looking weird. I've heard for years the plaintive cries. Keep Portland weird. Keep Portland weird. And yet I never heard make Portland Watto. There has been a Watto deficit in this city for nigh on 25 years. Never addressed until today. Am I offended? Yes. <laughs> but we're going to make up for lost time. Uh, who here, raise your hand and or make some noise. But the hand, let's say, let's put it this way. The hand is required. The noise is optional. <laughs> so please, raise your hand and if you feel like it, make some noise. If you have any, in any way, in any form of a point in time, digested some element of the George Lucas talk show. You watched it, you've been to a live show. Great. And now, requisite, raising of the hand, optional, making of the noise. If you have no idea what you're about to see tonight. <laughs> Great. I want to clarify that this is a very safe space. <laughs> The comfort of the audience at the George Lucas talk show is paramount importance to us. And, and the question I'm about to ask is not a gotcha. It's an honest question with no wrong answers. What do you think this is? <laughs> no wrong answers. Now, I usually say no wrong answers. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to scold you for this. It's just this is, this is a very specific point of contention. And it's not your fault. It's a messaging problem industry-wide, I would say. We have, at times, one specific time in particular, been referred to as the worst podcast in the world. And our umbrage with that title has nothing to do with people saying we're bad. Can't really dispute that charge. But never have we purported to be a podcast. That having been said, I guess everything is a podcast now yeah, from a certain point of view. Sometimes you have a conversation. You go, I guess that was a podcast. All movies are podcasts. It is live, though. You're right. Here's what the show is. This is. We can make this into a teachable moment. <laughs> this is a show with a razor-thin premise. The real George Lucas hosts a live talk show that has not sold every seat <laughs> in the film. That is the premise. It's razor-thin. George Lucas is going to come out here, interview some all-star, Yes, some of the weirdest residents of Portland. <laughs> Why would he do this, you may ask? Why? Well, it's a slightly sad story. <laughs> a little over 10 years ago, a crime was committed. I don't mean to be a narc, but I do think attention must be paid. The middle of the night while George was sleeping, Hong Zhu, Hong Zhu, etc., his child was stolen. The Lucasfilm Entertainment Company was ripped from its crib, <laughs> thrown into a sack over the shoulder, <laughs> hopped over the hillside. A theft enacted by a mouse, Mickey. <laughs> and left behind a ransom note that said, Dear George, here are the $6 billion we agreed to. <laughs> Love the Walt Disney Corporation. And in his grief came great art and great creativity. George said, maybe this is an opportunity to explore the other sides of myself that had never had time to bloom when the focus was on being a billionaire, businessman, tech maverick, genius filmmaker. He went, but who's the real George Lucas? A man known for his 
sparkling personality. An ace conversationalist who can relate to any human being on such an intimate, deep level on any subject, and also a very, very loose, funny man. <laughs> and so the pivot was made, and that's where we are today. He started self-financing a series of test shows, waiting for a network to pick it up, and here we are 10 years later. Uh, let me just uh, quickly, let's sort of do like, uh, kind of like calisthenics, like run through the what happens if something funny happens, how do you all react? <laughs> I think, not to give you notes, maybe try to make it a little more sincere. <laughs> it sounded a little sarcastic. <laughs> Our goal tonight is to try to earn those so they're involuntary, but if not, maybe fake it a little better, is all I'm going to say. Not to give a line reading, but maybe something like, <laughs> see, that sounded real. What happens if, if there's a moment that is so deeply thoughtful, like thought provoking? If something happens tonight, we go, oh my God. Well, I don't want to give a line reading. <laughs> How would you react if, like, a profound truth is dropped on this stage tonight? And by stage, I mean this section of the floor. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that's kind of a dealer's choice. You could do a lot of different things there. And uh, how, <laughs> how, how do we feel if, unfortunately, during the run of tonight's show, a death chill spreads across Portland <laughs> through touching of a magical orb? <laughs> Portland freezes over in the type of situation that only the Ghostbusters and their family and some other guys could solve. How do we react to that? Yeah, it sounds like about 45 domestic opening weekend. That's <laughs> the level of excitement there seems to be for that premise. Okay, I think that's enough. You all seem ready. Let's start the fucking show. Let's even crank up that volume, if we will. This is my jam right here. retired filmmaker George Lucas.
George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. <laughs> and welcome to the George Lucas talk show. Hello, Watto, how are you? I'm okay. <laughs> What's wrong, Watto? You seem sad. Kind of left me hanging. I put out for a high five, and you went here, and then you hard pivoted over to there, and Watto was apparently in a blind spot. Please forgive this. It'll just take a moment. Just, he's kind of a weird city. It's got me in a mood, you know? It's going to take me a second to get back on this. Sure. That's the tough part. Yes. I just never, it's like I never thought until tonight, oh, maybe I deserve a high five. I didn't know you wanted one. I didn't know until the moment. Right. Hit, until so how could I have known? Well, if you only right. just discovered yeah. your needs. Yeah, no, I know. We, I mean, this is, this is what we were talking about in therapy the other day. Yeah. I mean, it's all coming back to the whole the communication yeah. thing, the weirdness of doing a right. talk show, and then, like, when do you find the time to talk not in front of an audience? Right, know? just to talk to each other. Right, to and really I, listen. You know? I hear you. Yeah, I hear you and I see you. I see, I see you as well. I see you and I hear you and I feel you. Yeah, all right. Yes. How's everyone doing? This is our first time bringing the talk show to Portland. We're first very excited. Time. Yes. Uh, you're, right now you're looking at, I don't know if you follow the news, but right now you're looking at one satisfied shareholder. Uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of supporting Bob Iger in a proxy uh, fight. Beautiful uh, Bob. Beautiful Bob. Beautiful, beautiful Bob. Bob. Big, beautiful Bob Iger. Against Nelson Peltz. Nelson, who, or I call him Nelson Putz. Well, and it's funny. Yeah, and, and we want that to catch on. It's a little bit of uh, name-calling. Hashtag Nelson Putz on any of your preferred social media platforms. Yeah, he's trying to take over Disney, and if he does that, then he takes over Star Wars. Proxy and... battle. Yes. Yeah. Here's a question. Raise your hand if you have any idea what we're talking about. And if you don't, ra raise your hand as well. But now you do. Yeah. Now you do, because yeah. what we just said is what we're talking about. I would say, like in shorthand, I would say it's very similar to Palpatine trying to seize control of the Galactic Senate, right? Yeah, so if, you, if that makes sense to if you. If that makes sense, that's basically. It's a pre it maps pretty clearly. What's going on. Like, Bob Iger, love him or hate him, has been running the company fairly successfully. He stepped away for a couple of years. A pandemic happened. The yeah. correlation, I don't know. But, but. Every time he was the CEO, the chairman of the Walt Disney Corporation, there had never been a global pandemic. Up That's until right. That point. And, 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 and correlation is not causality. Of course. We all know that. But he, he comes back. He's trying to write the ship. And Nelson Peltz goes, yeah, excuse me. I have some ideas of how to run the Walt Disney Corporation. It's a Corporation. devastating impression of Nelson. <laughs> And so now, I guess, well, no, for a metaphor to track, it's more like, I have ideas of how to run. Come with me and you'll be stronger than you could ever imagine. Yeah. And so, uh, but I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Sorry. I got my museum. For those of you who want to take a quick trip down to L.A. in about a year, let's say a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say two years. No rush. Let's Work say it's, it's a loose 18 months from now. Yeah. 2025, that's when the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art should be opening up, but uh, stranger things have happened. 2025 could be just rounding to the nearest uh, five years, could be, a, could be looking at a 2026-er, who knows, maybe yes. even a 2027. Yeah. But no later than 2028, certainly at this point. No. Good yeah. museums, you can't rush a good museum. Don't rush a museum, no, I have Never heavens. rush a museum. Yes. No. Uh, but yes, you spoke out this week. You said you're a very happy investor and that you su put your full support. That's you put right. your full back. I was trying to do the math. I'm going to say it. You're George Lucasosi. 
Oh. Behind Bob Iger. Yeah, I put my, my whole L- Lucas Sussy. I don't into I can't it. it's weird because it has a U and an S in it already. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of gilding the lily a little bit. A little bit. bit. Yeah. Lucusy. Your George Lucusy into, into it. it. You put your whole Lucusy into that statement. Yeah. In support of one billionaire versus a different billionaire. You a billionaire said, I like this one billionaire and I dislike this other billionaire. That's that's my take on it. I don't like uh, not all billionaires. Not all billionaires. Not all billionaires. And that's another thing to hashtag. Yeah. You will say that. You know, we couldn't do this show without our friend Patrick, could we? We couldn't. And I couldn't do this show without two cans of beer, ladies and gentlemen. Patrick Cotner and two cans of beer. Thank you. Thank you, Wano, for not making me sit on the end. It's usually where I sit. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. How are you feeling, Patrick? I'm good. I'm good. I'm tired. We drove a lot today. Yes, you don't need to tell me that. We drove a lot today. You directed at one of the two people who absolutely knew. (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing good, though. We We had a nice dinner. George had some... Uh, hot chicken tenders. Not spicy hot. It was cooked to a heat where the yeah. the heat was trapped to the chicken. You take a bite and you think it's still cooking in there. Not that it was undercooked, but the heat was like there's no way it wasn't still cooking even more. They were yeah. very good. Did it, it did it hurt you, or you were saying they were they were cooked to your satisfaction? I was satisfied while also being hurt. Yeah. Because I I was trying to get back here in time to do the show, and I thought I have to eat these chicken fingers at a pace. Yeah. That would not be my choice. Where did I not have an engagement here? I don't want to go out on a limb, but is there any chance you accidentally ordered the chicken ruffers <laughs> instead of the chicken tenders? You ordered the chicken ruffers. Oh God! That you see, I refer the to ruffer the, here's variety. The, oh. I want to I want to break down why that didn't land. It's because <laughs> I was referring to them as fingers, and Fuck. so when you said ruffers, I was like, "How is fingering less than roughing?" Okay, okay, and okay, I, okay, okay. Can I take it again? Can I, I take it back? Lost. Can I take it back? Absolutely. It's just the verb makes a difference. Okay, I got it. I got it. I, I, it felt George, like you were hey, working unusually blue. George, no, I guess. George, set George, him up again. George, George set him up. Set, no, set me up again. With with the with the original vision. No, or you keep your lines. Edition. I'm gonna rewrite around. He's never gonna dialogue. stop if we don't do this. The, the chicken. I ordered chicken fingers. Okay. For dinner. Okay. How were they? Gentle. To. Oh God. Oh God. I didn't realize this was gonna be entirely new material. <laughs> we can uh, go to take three. We can go to take three. All right. I, I ordered chicken fingers for dinner. Hmm. <laughs> How was your experience? It was good. They were a little too hot. Too hot? Did they hurt you? <laughs> yeah. Sounds more like chicken middle fingers to me. All right. It's not bad. George, we got some guests. Let's bring out the guests. Yes, absolutely. Watto? Portland. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to bring to the stage Prime Michael Bendis, Matthew Kelly, Lincoln! Yeah! Here they come. Hello, hello. Hello. Are we missing a guest? Did we lose Kelly Sue? Did we lose Kelly Sue? Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, you I, don't I always, up. it's not always wise to release a trilogy at once. You sometimes want to have that anticipation. That's true. You, you always, George, you made, your, uh, your trilogies were like clockwork. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. Then you took a long gap, and then three, three, three. three that's right. Did you ever think about throwing the third beat off the hump? I, I consider it, yeah. Maybe make him wait. Yeah. Third beat, Kelly Sudakana! Kelly Sudakana! <laughs> Classic prank. <laughs> Hi. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. The, the atmosphere here is casually, we're just taking it. We were talking about what we ate. Yeah. What did everyone have for dinner tonight? Yeah, that's great. That's what the show is. I'm a comic creator, so I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> mine, mine is at midnight. Great. Yeah. Great, great, great. Like a healthy, normal person. Sure. That's a totally yeah. Normal. I'm having some gum. Gum? Good. What kind? Um, oh, well, it's in the car. Brand and flavor. Uh, it's, it's, it can, can you it's chocolate remember? mint flavored. Chocolate, chocolate mint. mint? Yeah. Was anyone expecting that? No. 
Boom. But it's in the car. It's in the car. I, otherwise, I should have brought enough for the class, and I didn't. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's I fine. think we're all just excited at the discovery. I've never heard of any I know. Type of How could you not gum? try chocolate mint gum? Yeah. It tastes like chocolate mint, and it's sugar-free. Have you been using this flavor for a while, or was it a recent uh, impulse It's purchase? been a while. It's been a while. So it's a favorite of yours. Yeah, that's my go-to gum. All right. I tried chewing pine tar recently, like, like pine tar gum. Mm-hmm. Did you like that? It's real weird. Yeah. You ever chew pine tar? No. It's like that. It's like having a pine tar in your mouth. I don't know how to just... It's, right. you know, it's weird. It's Would really weird. Would you ever even consider chewing pine tar? That feels so far off from pitch. you, Pitch. Well, George. pine pitch, right? That's yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, it's like pitch. It's, a kind of, it's the kind of sappy tar stuff that comes out of a pine tree. I did pitch. once read pine pitch. A, a Mickey Mouse comic. <laughs> Let's get to the topic. Let's get yeah. right to it. We're going to talk <laughs> comics tonight. It's a comic show. Um, in which Mickey Mouse noticed that the street had been freshly paved, and he said... Oh, when we were kids, we used to chew the tar from the streets. And then he took a bite of it, and he broke his teeth. Mm. And I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> Does anyone... Uh, and I, I looked this up. I did some research. Apparently, this was a thing at one point. That, that kids used to chew tar? From the streets. Well, pine pitch, yeah. They would use tar. Like It's sort of like a... You know, like the stuff that comes out of pine trees, it's all sticky and it gets hard enough, and they would use that as tar. And the, yeah. Wow. Okay. So what? And, and and in the Northwest, it's like, it's called pitch. And actually, it was a David Lynch was talking about how he used to chew it as a kid, and I was like, "Can you do that?" And I just went on Amazon and I was like, "Oh yeah, shit." So you can what? Totally do what that. changed David Lynch. culturally? It, uh, no, uh, George is uh, he's he's got a, a David, head full of things to I'm, say. I'm sorry, David Lynch, because it's all tying together. David Lynch, yeah. director of the Disney film The Straight Story. Of course. <laughs> yes. Of course. Re rejector of Return of the Jedi. Rejector of Return of the Jedi, a yeah. now Disney-owned property. Yes. Uh, Mickey Mouse eating tar. David Lynch eating tar. Yeah. Writer. It's a small world after all. Yeah. <laughs> they have that at Disney, too. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, what changed culturally seems to be uh, the material we use to pave streets, is what you're saying. It used to be less weird to eat tar from the street because the tar we used on the street was kind of tasty. I, I would at least argue we used to be able, that it used to be non-toxic? We used to be a proper country, I is sort don't. of, I feel like. Is this also, what I everyone expected? I don't think I would ever. <laughs> Wado, it feels like you're coming dangerously, dangerously close to making uh, what I think Nelson Putz wants Disney to be, <laughs> which is a get back to Mickey Mouse chewing tar. <laughs> I want, I want Lydia Tarr brought into the Disney umbrella. That's what yeah. I want. And Nelson, Nelson Peltz would never say that. No, that's that true. That is not his taste. I'm pro Tarr and pro Tarr with the accent over the A. Yeah. Was, this, was there anyone in the audience here uh, who was familiar with the concept of, of chewing on street tar? So everyone here mm. learned that. Oh, wait, wait, about, wait, wait, George, wait, George. What about oh, yes. Pine Pitch? Yes. Yes. You were familiar. Pine pitch. Oh, I got a nod for pine pitch. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Right. Congratulations. So you had heard you had heard of this. Great. Next year. I mean that. You got time. In advance. I'm not going to see him next year. I believe you. I will not be following up. I I I trust you implicitly. I cannot imagine a reason for you to lie about this. Also, the specificity of my wife will be turning 50 next year. If you were making up a wife, you would just say she was 50. She's 50. Sally O'Malley. No one, no one thinks about, no one thinks about a fake person's birthday <laughs> next year. Yeah. If they do, they are next level. You, you don't plot things. that far ahead. I think it's no. kind of a one day at a time thing when making up a fake person. Right. Kelly, yeah. Kelly Sue, what did you have for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Really. We've done, Everyone else has answered. Uh, a, a carb balanced tortilla okay. with some cheese melted on it. Yeah. And um, bitchin' sauce. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, it's good, right? That's a great transition. I want to talk about Bitch Planet. Okay. <laughs> great, great, good. Yes, yeah. great, yeah. good. Uh, this is why he's the host. How, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, the genesis of that? Because I, I love creating planets that have a certain, like, this planet's got a certain thing going on, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Whole planet's a city, yeah. planet's raining all the time. Yeah, this yeah. planet's all trees, etc. Right. Uh, was there a specific moment when that idea uh, began to germinate? 
It's a great title. Yes. Uh, uh, I think I think it was first. It was Planet Bitch, mm-hmm. uh, but then. We sounds just, a little bit more retail. It sounds like you could yeah. shop or eat there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but but then uh, but then Bitch Planet had a better flow to it. So I uh, I think that, that was yeah. a good. Do you feel that was a good call? I do. Yeah, you I don't, do. Yeah. Although there is a, I mean, there are certain stores in the South that won't carry it. Mm-hmm. So well, um, yeah. yeah. Was that a concern of the publisher? This is a genuine question. Was that like a? Was no, that ever it, something no, they it was up? Uh, the book's published by Image Comics, yeah. and uh, so the, it was considered sort of a badge of honor. I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, no, I, I didn't. Um, I mean, it's not a real planet. Like, I, I oh. mean, I, I, like Dagobah. <laughs> Believe me, I'm right. I, I'm right no, no, there with you. I understand I did, this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, or, or rather, the um, the the world building of it as a, a, a planet of bitches is mm-hmm. not like that. Essentially, the idea, like the right. re- the real bitch planet, is Earth. Right. You know. Mm. Right. It's not like Jim Henson's Dog City. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Which is a real city filled with dogs who can talk, and there are dogs who are police. They're gangsters, and they're yeah. cops, yeah. and they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not. Is that related to I mean, Isle of Dogs? Anything. No, that that's like a trash city where the dogs end up, yeah. right? But it's not designed it's to be a dog city. No. Yeah. They send them there. Right. But some of them went there of their own volition looking. For the other dogs? For the other dog. Yeah. Dog but city is like right. a properly zoned right. city. But that's... But there are bitches there. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there are. But yeah. The, but the Isle of Dogs isn't like Isle of Lucy. No. <laughs> no, which to be, to be clear... The whole city doesn't revolve around Lucy, even though it feels that way in certain episodes. Right. Like, not everyone in that city is a Lucy. Right. Right. The <laughs> Isle of Lucy. The Isle of Lucy. Patrick, we don't yeah. do that. We don't. People, <laughs> we don't do that. That's the one thing we don't do on this uh-huh. show. If they didn't get it, we just move on. We move on. People are happy to wait for yeah. a bit that they like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are but, more coming, I promise you. Um, it's a very, it's a very uh, exciting, and I want to include all three creators here. It's a very, you know, I'm a storyteller. That's at my core. I lo- that's what we really have in common here is we all love to tell stories. It's kind of what we know you from. Yeah, mm-hmm. from Personally. the stories. That's that how I, I know you. I don't know how everyone else Do we have you. any museum aficionados here tonight? Are there anyone here... <laughs> Because of the museum, <laughs> I think yeah. Speculative yeah. fans. Well, yes. what's your story? As they ask of the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art, <laughs> and look, it's blank. <laughs> story has yet to be written. The gift shop comes first. <laughs> well, the merchandising certainly helps it's the story. The, it's yeah, sure. It helps fund the storytelling. The merch funds the storytelling. But more specifically, though, you are a comic collector, as I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He loves we the duck in- books. Yeah, I like funny animal comics. I yeah. like adventure comics. Classics Illustrated. <laughs> Wrote an intro to a Fantagraphics Carl Barks uh, compilation collection, right? Yeah. 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 And honestly, one of your big moves in the world has inspired many of us. We, th- we talk about you this way. Which you- move? The move of you wanted Buck Rogers, couldn't get your hands on it, so yeah. you made your own thing that made you feel like Buck Rogers, yeah. which was Star Wars. And now Buck Rogers is barely worth a buck. That's right. <laughs> but often the value is like 99, 95 cent Rogers, I call him. <laughs> He's well, when we're creating new stuff, we think about that like, well, I'm, I can't write Indiana Jones, but let me think of what would make me feel the same. Right, was Indiana Jones, and we create new stuff. Did I? Out. Did I ever? Uh, was there ever a, uh, uh, something that I did that you wrote uh, something thinking of me? I, I, all the time. I, I'm a. I'm a. I'm of an age. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a OG Star Wars trilogy baby. I sat in Empire Strikes Back, so rattled by my first screening of it, my mom just let me sit in the theater and watch <laughs> it again. Like we'd even we just sat there in shock and watched it again. That's, Didn't pay that, for. Uh, I will say, George, yes, I didn't pay for it the second time, but over the years, I've made it up to you okay. many, many times. No number of, of wrongs, <laughs> rights make undo that wrong. 
it was Cleveland. It was the '80s, and he, right. you know, listen. Okay. But my my point is, it was uh, I. But you know what? Actually, we worked at Marvel like the whole time Star Wars had been at Marvel, so there was always like thinking yeah. about it and talking about it. But the one time I got a call from your people, yeah, was and I and I Google this before the show to like re- refresh my memory because it's not something that exists before Disney Plus, before the J.J. Abrams verse part of all of this. You had signed a deal with CBS to do a procedural Star Wars TV show. Yeah. And I got a call about that, I think because I was doing procedural stuff in my comics, but I got a call to come in for that. I went to Google it to see. I remember there was a, it was public, I, it, like it was something I could see. But now when you Google CBS, George Lucas, Star Wars, it's all holiday special. You can't mm-hmm. get past the p- pages and pages of holiday special. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't find it. But I was wondering, do you remember? Signing a deal to do a a, a procedural yeah, like that Matlock was, a Star Wars show on CBS. Would you say a Matlock? Well, Star it was it was it was being pissed like something for that audience. It was the, the Underworld like, show, yeah, right? It was, that what it was? was okay, prettier yeah. than Matlock though. Okay, like, I, I yeah. think like there, Matlock could never. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't have like a fancy uh, white suit and, and walk around or anything. But uh, but there were, yeah. You know, a lot of people have said that like Andor has borrowed, has done some things that might have happened had we had we made it all the way through with that. Oh, okay. I'm um, Google it. Couldn't find it, but yeah, yeah. I uh, there's a Vanity there's a Vanity Fair article not long ago, mm-hmm. like a kind of what happened because it was this thing that was going to happen and then it just stopped. you wrote like a hundred episodes. There, like you there, had, and the proof of concept. There's like the test video that. Still has leaked right. out. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yes. I didn't yeah. realize it was that far along. I, I, had a, right. I have a friend that was up for one of the parts and was was like close, and then it yeah. just stopped. And so did you go in? I got a call. I was so excited yeah. to get a call. I mean, here in Portland, I was thinking, hey, well, they want to talk to you, and yeah. I never gotten a call like that from any sure. Lucasy film thing. I'm like, should we uh, get when, to the airport? When was this? What was it like? 2007? Earlier, like, earlier. Like, earlier. Yeah, I was like, Her- I was definitely working. Hurricane in the Katrina era, sort of. <laughs> it was. It was right after Sith came out because the pitch was yeah. animated Clone Wars live action on the world. Show. Okay. That's so what we like, call the period of time after Sith. We call it the Hurricane Katrina era. Okay. <laughs> That's well, what we, well I was enough. living here, so definitely after 2001, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm yeah. here. I get to the airport, and I remember because I was at the airport, and my flight got canceled. Yeah. Uh, and I had to go home, and I was devastated because. I, in my head, you were waiting there with an open checkbook, waiting to make uh, uh, all wanna, the dreams I don't want to break true. your heart, but I was there. I had my checkbook out. I know, I know. <laughs> and, it, and then, and then that night, like there was no more flights to LA. You're not coming. <laughs> so who did I make it out to? <laughs> You know the way the uh, driver at the airport will hold up a little like whiteboard with the passenger's name on it? Mm-hmm. George just holds up a giant like publisher's clearinghouse yeah. check yeah. with your name and a marker and you can just write the number you want uh, as long well. as you get off that plane and meet him there. Yeah. Well, that didn't happen. So I, I got uh, the flight got bumped and then between the flight bumping, the project was over. Oh, yeah. no. Like, literally, the project <laughs> had, a bad had ended. And it was a, like, the J.J. Abrams thing was right behind it. Like, that was the announcement. Wow. Like, we're not doing that. We're doing this. And I was like, yeah. oh. Well, yeah. I, uh, there were a number of things that got stalled. But, yeah, a very dramatic Star Wars and also a very funny Star Wars. Because uh, Detours was detours, the other one. Yeah. And we actually made Detours. We, we made it. And we just assumed, yeah, it's great. Yes, cheer. <laughs> uh, and... You know, and I'm, you know, I can't wait to talk to Bob Iger again and just see, like, where are we with Detours? <laughs> Explain to people what Detours, Detours is. Detours was a, 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 a what, what if Star Wars was animated and very funny. And uh, it was sort of like built off the robot chicken. It was a lot of, the, I basically, I like the robot chicken people goofing on Star Wars. So I said, hey, you want to come over here and do it for real? I got my checkbook out. <laughs> and they came over, they showed up. I wrote them all checks. I knew that was it. And that's the one part you whiffed on, Brian. Yeah. You yeah, I'd write Seth Green a check and just, just write people checks. And then said, look, we'll start making the episodes now. Most people wait for a network to say, we'll pay for the episodes to be on our network or on our streaming service now. Back then, if you were a billionaire who just wanted to make, and I guess I'm generalizing as if anyone else has ever done this. I don't know of anyone who's done this. The, I just paid for two seasons of a TV show, and then when Disney bought Star Wars, they decided never to release them. Or never to release them yet. That's, 
that's the satisfied shareholder in me talking. But there, we're, there we're, are, we are three years away from a big round number, and I'm sure you've got all mm -hmm. kinds of great stuff is going to come out in well, 2027. And, and and I'll tell you, the Detours episodes are like a fine wine. They, when we put them in the vault 10 years ago, they were funny. Well, they are in the vault. They were funny and, and 10 so years with ago. With Song of the South. Yeah. Yeah, yes. detours. The detours yes. right next the to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. gotten very close, Song of the South and <laughs> Detours. They yeah. talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, do 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 do. How do you do? Uh, that's but, a song from Song of the South. But George, I, I mean, I was moonlighting at the Lucasfilm uh, accounting department around this mm. time because the trilogy had wrapped up, and I was sort of in transitional phase. Acting whatever. work wasn't coming. You were on the network. I was. Yeah, I was. My my memory is that the plan was to fully self finance both shows, Detours yeah. and the Underworld show, and Detours was not inexpensive but much easier to get up and running. And the notion was if George Lucas pays for full seasons of Star Wars shows out of his own pockets, there will be such a competitive bidding war, he'll make back his money. And we crunched the numbers on the Underworld show and basically said, there is no way this will ever make money. Like it was just trying to do sort of like virtual backlot stuff 20 years too early in an hour long format for like 20 episode seasons. It was a number that uh, no studio network was ever going to be able to fully reimburse. That's my memory. And least. on top of that, the show was like Matlock. <laughs> so. I heard Matlock. That was the pitch I got. I got, I got Matlock have, and have Star you Wars. Guys, have you guys made things that have not been released and is there something that you're, uh, you wish did come out? That it languishes on the shelf somewhere? Ashcan copies. Have any of you been victims of the dreaded Ashcan copy? I, well, I release everything. I don't I, they have like yeah. a pitch. You know, the, it was funny. The, the only. I got a call from post George Lucas film is we're like, hey, we're making TV. We have to make 800 TV shows. And what's your idea? And, and my pitch was literally Columbo in Star Wars. Wow. Uh, as a, yeah, and Mount Lock uh, adjacent. Phone did not ring back, <laughs> but there you go. In my head, it was a, it was you know I was always I'm always in, I was always interested in like the kids that didn't make it to the Jedi Academy. Like oh you're kind of forcey, but not good enough to get into Hogwarts, right? Like the kids oh, who like, were like 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 people who flunked out of the Jedi Academy, or like just weren't cl like a little for, like force sensitive enough to be like oh it's gonna rain tomorrow and it rains tomorrow and everything. Like boy he always knows when it's gonna rain tomorrow. Yeah, you know, like shitty force. <laughs> yeah, but like a kind of a guy who spins that into like a hoaxy detective-y kind of. Yeah. He just kind of has a, a thing, and it was going to be a. Oh, and I wanted to get to the bottom of why IG88 needed money. <laughs> my my son and I came up with a story about why the robot needs money. <laughs> why why did you, why do you think the robot needed well, money? Well, here was our pitch. Mm -hmm. My son, uh, who I've, I've stolen many of my best ideas from, was that... And Pitch, by the way, is a name for, like, the tar they used to put. The pitch, the, here's yeah. my... Yeah. Um, right. You chew on it. That it was a, exactly. It was you a, chew uh, on a good pitch. That there was a guy, like a bounty hunter, who, uh, 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 or maybe, like, a, a crime boss, uh, who at some point became so comfortable in his largesse and, and, and wealth that he decided, oh, man, it's so much work to go out there and bounty hunt. I'm going to make this robot go do it for me. Mm -hmm. Hey, robot, go do it. And the robot's like, okay, that's my prime directive, right? I'm a bounty hunter. I find bounties, and I go out and make money for my boss. And eventually, the boss dies, and no one turns the robot off. So <clears throat> IG-88 is just making billions and billions <laughs> and just killing everything he can forever in a bank account no one has access to because no one will turn him off. That was our idea. It was like, oh, he was just like a kill he was just a bounty hunting robot, a droid that no one no one ever shut down. So that was gonna be part of it was like we're gonna get to the bottom of why does this robot need money? <laughs> and who'd you pitch this to? Because I would have bought this in the room. Yeah, you know, no. <laughs> You know, there was a document, and uh, and and then there was some issues with the Willow program, and uh, and the, like I said, the phone never rang back. So mm -hmm. I'm pitching it to all of you tonight. Just Can anyone buy this in the room? Anyone willing? Anyone willing? To, and you have to please back this up with actual funding. <laughs> like, don't also, make a promise to not tell Nelson Peltz about this. We can't <laughs> yeah. start feeding things to him. Yeah, but yeah. that's also, uh, you know, as we were saying in the Buck Rogers of it all. Uh, you could make that story without uh, without setting it in. Have you ever considered doing that? Yeah, I, everything I do ends up being Columbo in a thing. So yeah, it'll get there one day. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, no. But that was the thing. Like they get the call. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. I'm trying to play it casual and how deep 
do I go? Like, I'm not going to mention IG-88 on the call, but I'm going to put it <laughs> in the document. But then eventually I had to just write, like, deep nerd, like, this isn't, this isn't somebody who's wikiing to try and get through a conversation. Like, yeah. I have this stuff conversationally off the top of my head. And that's where I lost the job. I'm certain that that was where, like, oh, he's one of those guys. <laughs> here's, here's, a, here's a hard-hitting journalistic question. This is a thing I'm very curious about for the full panel. Uh, Brian, you were talking about like the, the Buck Rogers thing, mm -hmm. the infamous, sometimes it's better not to have access to the property yes. so that you can fully make it of, out of your own mind, whole cloth, and own it in that way. But all three of you have gone back and forth between your sort of creator-owned ideas and working on the big IP. Do you ever have the conflict of like, you come up with a great idea while you're on like an IP title and you have the question of like, should I give this up or should I hold this on for later? Is it better to contribute this to the legacy of these other characters or build something new out of it? I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think ideas are as rare as all that. I think a, a lot of people think that, that that's where the value is, that that's the, that's the hard thing to find. It's like, oh, you know, I have this idea and it's so precious and I'm not gonna give it away. And like, you have hundreds and hundreds of ideas every day. It's just a matter of learning to recognize them. Um, so you'll have more. That's not the limiting factor. The limiting factor is like time and courage. Hmm. And so I don't think that that's a, I don't, I don't worry about, you know, oh, this is, this is my million dollar thing and I'm gonna save it for me. It's, it's like, am I, excited about this, this is this the best choice for this project? I don't ever think about it that way. And also, you can reuse that shit, you know? Like, so just because you did it in one thing doesn't mean you can't do it again later. Sure. Yeah. I, I have one time had one where I go, oh, I really like, I wish I that was mine so we did it again as the, for, that we owned. It was literally a, like a spy idea that's based on reality where there were some rock stars and some filmmakers that have been asked by the CIA to do some stuff, and I did the Marvel version of that, and I was like, I wanted, and then I did uh, one that we own, too, so. Great. That, but mostly, no, it's that the idea comes, like, in the moment you're there, and you do the best idea, and it, if, if that's where it belongs. It probably only would work in the space that you're thinking of it. It's the way I've seen it most of the time. Yeah. How about you? My only idea is Columbo and different shit, so I'm... <laughs> yeah. But I you know what's funny? Good idea, though. Uh, in preparation for this, I was uh, reliving some of my uh, George Lucas moments over the years, and one of my favorite things in the entire world that never gets brought up on this uh, show, uh, and one of the greatest achievements of George Lucas's entire career uh, uh, is, is the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark... Um, uh, story conference transcript. Sure. Are you are you are you guys familiar with this? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. in 1978, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and Lawrence Kasdan got together in a room with a Citron tape, and they recorded themselves working out Indiana Jones, just mm -hmm. tearing through it. Mm -hmm. And it is if you and it's available online. You can it's the transcripts are available online. It's 90 percent George. Yeah. yeah. It's mostly. I don't George. bring I don't bring it up because I don't like to boast. Right. <laughs> But, uh, and I don't like to embarrass my buddy Steve. Uh, yeah, no, it's amazing how much of it you had. You brought to the table so much of it. And, and Steve's then ideas, George. Steve's idea is in that session, right? Well, Steve, Steve's idea was uh, someone brought up, um, you had brought up uh, Peter Falk. Uh, in, in, uh, uh -oh. yeah, that's why I was bringing it up <laughs> that there's a, a Peter Falk element to. It's not just you, Matt. To the Indiana Jones-ness, and, and, and your buddy Steve was like, oh, no, it's a movie. He, he, he's got to be but a, see, that's, a movie that's star. That's also subtle negging yeah. on your part. As we all know, Steven Spielberg, 22 years old, directed the first episode of Columbo, Murder by the Bull. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. True. As a 22-year-old wonder kind. And yeah. on the Universal lot. So that was just a brilliant way to keep him yeah. on his pins. You're not the big shot. But you yeah. described yeah. Indiana Jones fish. as the most handsome movie actor with a sheen of Peter Falk. Peter Falk, like yeah. a I was scruff. Like, Let's go for a Magnum PI type. <laughs> and we tried very we actually cast Tom Selleck in the role and then they wouldn't let him out of the show. So I said, fine, we'll do Harrison. And then there was a there was a strike, so he would have been able to do it anyway, but he'd That's already right. passed. Ah, oh, but he got blue bloods. Everything worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison I, never got to date one my of the dad friends loves on Friends. Show. You know, Tom got to be Monica's boyfriend for a while. On Harrison Friends. never got to do reverse mortgage commercials either. So, <laughs> who wins? Yet. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just sort of realizing that just as the three of us have always been made our own. It's working for you know Disney or DC or whatever or Warner Brothers. Is, it's fun. It's great. But we've never not done our own stuff. I'm just sort of sitting here thinking that like I have my sort of. Uh, I remember a documentary about Star Wars that I watched a million, billion, zillion times when I was a kid, and part of it was you talking about not being able to pay the actors what you thought they deserved. Mm -hmm. And so you gave them points. Right. Uh, which ended up working out super great for all of them. Yeah. And, that, and just thinking how incredibly fair that sounded. And when I, I was a kid. On American Graffiti, I gave them points not before it was a hit. I gave them points after it was a hit. Retroactive right. right. points. But just that that yeah. idea of like equity equity yeah. and like, oh yeah, if this is if this makes a dollar, you're gonna make a dime. And that being like, oh yeah, that that totally sounds fair. If right? I can just jump in, Matt, uh, you said it worked out well for everybody. Uh, <laughs> George's initial... wallet had gotten a little tighter by the prequels, especially for <laughs> characters he essentially could claim he made. <laughs> So I stepped in at that. And man, owned. And I will also say, I believe the story is that James Earl Jones was offered the points. And he said, I kind of need money tomorrow. <laughs> and he took like $10,000 and no points. Yeah. But now they've, 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 uh, they've, he's recorded all of the human phonemes. <laughs> so they'll yes. be able to AI create. Which is great. Yeah. Darth, it's just Darth great. Vader's not going anywhere, anywhere. folks. <laughs> I would love to just have the raw takes of like, okay, James, now we need a ah, no, la 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 la. No. Oh. I mean, I didn't. I, I was out of the game by that point, Star Wars wise, so I didn't supervise the session. But I hope they got some silly sounds. The quick brown <laughs> fox case. jumped over the lazy dog. Or just like, let's hear what Darth sounds when he goes woo. <laughs> just in case we need it. Can we so get some real just, horny Darth sounds? <laughs> Can we get one of him slipping on a banana peel and then a bucket lands on his head? Yeah, oh, just, so, just, just so we have it. Just so we have well, it. You know, those Boston Dynamic robot dogs can all be thwarted by banana peels. So maybe you would want a, a whoopsie James Earl, jo J James Earl Jones voice to come out of your... That's how they could have beat Darth Vader so much quicker. <laughs> Toss a little space banana peel in front of I'm him. I'm just thinking about the Terminator series now. I mean, like seven <laughs> movies where they're throwing all their best lasers at these guys and they're like... Unfazed, you eat a couple nanners, throw them on the ground. Robert Patrick walking down the street and fully going on his Resistance back. Yeah. successful, yes. <sighs> George. Yeah, what Do you about? guys like when your books get released as paperbacks or hardcovers? Because let me say, I brought some books for George to hold up to talk about them, and those hardcovers are real freaking heavy. <laughs> Yeah, I, oh, I, yeah. Look how a, big a, that guy is. Yeah, God, you're buying omnibus editions. Well, you gotta, let's bless. clarify you gotta, here. It's... I, I don't even like buying hardcovers. Sure. I, I don't think I should have nice things. Like I, I, I'm a, I like paperbacks. Yeah. And those are my really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I really dislike. I love the hard because when you're writing them, every single issue feels like that when yeah. you're doing it, and they come out and they're all like you know flappies, right? So when they come out all collected like that, yeah. mwah, and then you try to best. read them and it just uh, it's awful. Yeah, but. I tried to run the gamut with the stuff I brought. Yeah. I was like, let's bring the big one, let's bring the medium one, and let's bring the floppy guy. Well, like, okay, so this is interesting. The three books that are up here on stage right now, yeah. and, and Secret Invasion right, as well, Secret right? Yeah. Like the question I was asking earlier about mm -hmm. like the personal ideas versus the ideas you contribute to the legacy of these characters. All four of those books have now like pretty directly been adapted. What? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It is an interesting thing that, like, no, the three, three of, of them have been directly adapted. <laughs> One of them was ignored completely by the filmmakers, and they did their own thing. Sure. So, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, the, like, the three of you have had such an outsized influence on the legacy characters it's that crazy. you've written. It's crazy. That yeah. it's like you've kind of contributed the pieces that have become the like mainstream cultural understanding of these characters in a way. The best the best part of it is we were his, history comic history nerds too and we've met a lot of our heroes and we've talked to them and have dinner with them and the fact that we are so our generation, to be fucked over the same way they were fucked over. Yeah. It's so great. But so also great. to for it to be while we're like 
in the game and right. a, a, a coherent and alive. Like Jack Kirby talked endlessly about what he wanted. He described the paper he wanted his work on. He described the movies he imagined. And then when you watch the like Avengers Endgame with the audience reaction, you go, that's exactly what he wanted. He didn't get to see it. That would have floored him. Every character from every decade of his life yeah. coming together and everyone cheering. Right? And, and like how many decades it took for yeah. any of them to get made. Right. And then the cycle has like become so quick now that you folks are like doing work that's feeding back into the thing in real and, time. And we get to yeah. experience yeah. it while we're here. It's it, that I feel yeah. really is a blessing because I've 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 seen some of our our heroes not been able to be there for it. So I'm thrilled that we get to it see it. It just took someone to start it out. Like if in order for there to be <laughs> yes. the Marvel Cinematic universe. You needed one person, you one person with the bravery to make one Marvel movie when no one else dared. And and take the slings and arrows when it doesn't yeah. turn out perfectly just like they wanted. Yes. Didn't capture all of the perhaps satirical notes of the original title. Right. Maybe it doesn't light up the box office. A, a kind of strategic martyrdom that perhaps has not been repaid in kind. But the best part is every day we get closer and closer to Patton Oswalt's prophecy coming true from Parks and Rec. It gets closer. The Thanos Darth Vader story will happen mm -hmm. in our lifetime. I don't. You don't look happy about this, but it, <laughs> I am. No, no, I am a satisfied shareholder. I got right. So. <laughs> I just want to see the prophecy that, I come bet true. that is in a black envelope at the end of Nelson Putz's <laughs> pitch to the a fellow shareholders. I bet that is his like just top push, secret plan to pushes fight it across the table to is them. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah, Star Wars versus Marvel. I'm just realizing <laughs> that like the three of you all have made so much work that is owned by Disney, and I am owned by Disney. <laughs> And Patrick She's in Captain Marvel. She probably is too. I bet that I don't know what, what the details of your. Do they own were, your? You you were on camera. You were you had an on camera. What was? Remind me what your appearance was. She was in that bending. <laughs> Good performance. I, I I'm in the subway scene. Yeah. And uh, and I I walk by Carol and give her the stink eye. <laughs> so Good. St stink eye lady. So were Thank you, you. Thank you. I do have a theater degree. Were you there the day that Stan shot his cameo, or was that separate? No, no. Okay. They kept us separate. Okay. On purpose? Yeah. Oh, you know. okay. Great. That was, I think that was when they, before he really, mm -hmm. really declined, they yes. shot a like the last dozen sure, in like sure, a day sure. for him, as the story yeah. went. Uh, but Stink Eye Lady may be owned by Disney in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. now. Like, in theory, they could reuse Stink Eye Lady. Stink Eye Lady has a Funko Pop, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you but does, it, does that mean we're related? In well, a certain way. Yeah. Yes, all part of the Disney family, and we're all unified in lining George's pockets as a satisfied shareholder. It is not. It is not inconceivable that Stink Eye Lady, if the Marvel and Star Wars universes collide, that Stink Eye Lady could cross paths with Jabba the Hutt's son, Stinky the Hutt. This is true. <laughs> Now, Kelly Sue, what do you think happened to Stink Eye Lady afterwards? Like, where is she today? Well, I think she, she went uh, and got on the train and, yeah. and went about her business probably to her job. She was probably a temp. She was sure. probably temping sure, sure, sure. somewhere. She uh, blipped. Okay. Yeah. She totally and that was, blipped. And that would have been Los Angeles in, like, 1993? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid-90s? Yeah. yeah. And her, her hair was a little fashion forward for the time. <laughs> so, sure. um, so, you know, that probably affected her ability to sure. keep those jobs. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So, cool. Um, I hope she's doing okay. But yeah, you know, I mean, the 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 Marvel Universe. I can't believe you're giving this IP away for free up here. I know, but like, I'm, baby, I got a billion of them. Uh. All right. Um, <laughs> But it, it is the, the Marvel Universe is the longest running continuous narrative in human history. And so to have had the opportunity to have sewn on that quilt a little bit is, that's an honor. You know? A major piece, a major yeah. piece. Yeah. They, they uh, gave Hawkeye a dog, and the dog is now a stuffed animal mm -hmm. that they sell at Pizza Disneyland dog. and Disney World. Yeah. And they made the, the some of the book takes place during Christmas, and they uh, 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 takes place during Kwanzaa, and so they made it a holiday show. And every the last two Christmases, they have relaunched it and re-promoted it as like, come spend Christmas with your friends from Marvel, and mm -hmm. it's the Hawkeye show, and it's like, and the the pizza dog has a little Santa hat, and it's like, oh, so not only are we a part of all of that, but to to, to, to contribute to a piece of the. Disney, the Walt Disney Corporation Holiday Entertainment 
conglomerate. Right. Like, like yeah. part this of is, the, the lineage of Disney dogs, from Dippy Dog, who became Goofy, to, of course, Mickey Mouse's loyal pet, proud, Pluto. Proud dog. Yeah, no. Wait, George right. Geef. But it's going to outlive... Yeah. George like Keith. me, my kids, my kids' kids. Like, it's your more, Star Wars holiday special. Every Christmas it's going to, except it's going to come out every Christmas instead of one and done. Right? Mm-hmm. No one's seen it <laughs> since 1978. Yeah. That's amazing. That's well, amazing. I, oh, hold on. Sorry. Yeah? Uh, What's happening? Oh, oh, is he? <laughs> got he's, 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 he's got to go. You, I got stuff. There's he stuff. stuff. You, See, I got, I'm thrilled we're talking about Star Wars, and I, I love Star Wars. I'm, I'm here for other reasons. Great. I'm here. I brought. Give me the idol. Give me the wish. <laughs> and let me, I just thought of this now. You know, why at the Disney theme parks where they serve the Dole Whip, why do they not, not have something have like the... that where it's like, give me the whip, throw me the idol, yeah, I'll yeah, give you the yeah. whip? Are you suggesting? You should pay with a little, yes. And, and the Dole Whip booth is legitimately right next to the Indiana Jones ride. It's, it's right there. It's right you should there. Be, Speaking of things that are, I'm sorry. Yes. You, well, you should be able to pay for the Dole Whip with uh, some sort of like little idol that you get that is your credit. Yeah. It'd be a great promotion to say, if we deem your idol worthy, we will yes. give you one free Dole Whip. There you yeah. go. Every time I see this show on YouTube, I'm like, why isn't that idol on the desk? Oh, my goodness. That, right? Well, no, yes, no, I, you're right. I have, right. A, I have a shiny one. and uh, it's, no, That's it's, the real one. I know, I know. Okay, right. Yeah. But it's, it's not. It's not the real one. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I truly, if you see a live stream, it's usually right at my feet. Oh, okay. That, that All is, right. Yeah. What is she sitting on? Uh, she's having a baby. Yeah, it's a birthing idol. This is um, a fertility, fertility, fertility idol. idol. Yeah. Yes. Oh. It was given to me in uh, a, 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 a Michigan a Detroit Comic Con in the mid '90s. This is before Etsy, before uh, things were around. I, for a year, thought it was the real one. Because uh, somebody brought it to me and they had it wrapped up in like red velvet and they like yeah. and I was like oh my god and, 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 and then, to be fair and then, and then yeah. Etsy came out and there's a million of them yeah. they, they, but, but Brian to you be you fair, chose you're, poorly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your confusion I'm sure also was rooted in the fact that it was Belloc who gave it to you right and there was a lot of people chasing him yeah. it was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. a rush thing I didn't get all the details arrows, but yeah. Yeah. yeah also I have I have the I have the Grail Diary yeah now. I get a Facebook ad for this every now and then. Is that the one where it's the you can get all the details? This this is if you this open is it. it it's signed there. by Hitler, and I was really hoping. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. he, was he at a Comic Con? How did you get to his audience? Yeah, he goes. He goes to all of them. He goes okay. all. Of them. He's huge cosplay. Mega Monster Con. <laughs> it's all right if I look through this. Please, please. That actually was a uh, a gift from a uh, fellow guest, Matt Fraction, yeah. who gave that to wow. me. Wow. Brent, wasn't one of your first comics you made as a kid was like a shot by shot recreation yes this is true thank you i forgot that when i was a little wee lad and i decided i was going to make comics for a living and i said all right that's it i'm making comics i was like seventh and eighth grade i had uh uh taken passover vacation i went to hebrew school so passover vacation is a solid two weeks of spring break and i bought a ton of chocolate pudding (laughs) and my vhs (laughs) tape of raiders lost ark and I decided that I am going to redo the Marvel Comics adaptation of Raiders of the Lost Ark. So offended was I by the one they had produced. Not that it wasn't great material. It's Klaus Janssen. It was amazing. But they, they, they had only given it two issues of adaptation. It's a, it's a whole movie. And they, yeah. they, they cliff notes it. And I wanted every little nook and cranny illustrated and drawn. So I sat and I, and I, and I said, I'm going to draw the whole thing. And every time there was an edit in the film, I paused the VHS and I would draw the panel. Yeah. And I did this for two solid weeks. I drew 48 pages of comic book art. I never got out of the woods. It never got up to directed by Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I just have, it's just, and so people who think I'm long-winded now, you should have seen me when I was seven. <laughs> Do you still have that? How much pudding did you eat? Well, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the, such a the better question. question. So, and the, uh, so I'm just, I'm pounding the cheapest pudding you can buy at a grocery store in the 1980s. And uh, like like a can of like a <laughs> metal can of pudding, and I'm just pounding pudding and drawing Indiana Jones over and over and over again, uh, trees over and over <laughs> and over again, and then uh, cuts you. And I'm this is I'm, I'm apologize for the sensitive people in the audience. I, I I went to the bathroom and at the corner of my eye, 
uh, I saw something bright blue in the toilet, like bright blue, like Smurf blue. My poop had turned blue, like br- there was no brown. And I went, Mom! And uh, I had to scoop up the blue poop and put it in a baggie and take it to my local pediatrician, who had been my doctor since I was born. And uh, I brought it in, and he uh, came. I, I was very worried. He sat down and goes, Brian, have you eaten anything with any artificial coloring in it? And he goes, and I mean a lot, like, a, <laughs> like so much, so much artificial coloring that your insides have been like turned <laughs> colors. What have you eaten? I go, nothing. He goes, nothing. I'm talking about like, and I go, was chocolate pudding have artificial oh flavor? He goes, how much did you eat? Like, <laughs> immediately. And I, I had, I had stained my colon for, st- also- for, for Raiders of Lost now, Ark. Uh, apologies to the sensitive people in the audience. How did you scoop it out? <laughs> Baggy, old, old fashioned. Okay. No, okay. Nothing, nothing, okay, nothing great, great. romantic about it. Okay, good. Yeah, it's, it's romantic. Also- <laughs> <laughs> well, first I put on a little Al Green and kind I of wine and dine it. Yeah. It's weird well, that it's it, you and it me was a lighting. product, though, where the artificial coloring was basically poop color. <laughs> Somehow yeah. made your yeah. poop a different we got, color. We found Says Trisham. the blue guy. I yeah. know. <laughs> mean? We I found remember trace my doctor, amounts of human feces in this pudding. <laughs> my doctor wanted to follow up on this big time, and I do feel that he thought there was a paper in it for him. Like something had happened that had not happened to humans before. Stop the presses, but yeah. So there you go. Now, so, but my dedication to this is what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. No, how absolutely. much I wanted to do this. Two questions. Yes. Uh, unrelated. That's only two. Well, well, I was going to move away, but I guess if anyone has any other related questions. I got a couple. Okay. <laughs> do you want to go? Go ahead. Go ahead. You go it was first. you color. That's my color. <laughs> what? It was yeah. this, no, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. You good? You go, you go okay. first. You got your uh, uh, Why haven't there been more Indiana Jones comics, first of all, <laughs> in a long time? And have you tried to write Indiana Jones since then? I, uh, and this is all braggy, and I apologize. I don't mean Do any it. of this in braggy, but for. I, I, I got into a place in my career where I got in a call from Dark Horse, our dear friends Dark Horse. Anyone from Dark Horse in the room? Maybe I love no. Dark Horse. Okay. Well, I, well, I am. I am now there at my home. Yeah. But at the time, they were just my friends, and they called me up and, and they said, "Come over." And I went over to Milwaukee, where the offices are, and they sat down and go, "Here's the deal. Well, we just made a big deal with Lucasfilm, and we're going to do the new Star Wars, which mm-hmm. ended up being uh, the High Republic stuff and yeah. all that. And we're going to do Indiana Jones too. And what we can offer you." is a letter signed by George Lucas and Steven Spielberg saying anything you write is canon. Whoa. That, that was the thing. Like, we they, don't they, offer that a lot. I, no, I, I've, I, and, and again, I don't know if it was true or not, but the person said these words to me. and I If I signed it, down. you can count on it. All right. It's so, like the papers of transit in Casablanca. You can go to yeah. anywhere. And it was the only time I went to Marvel, which I was under a very lovely contract with, and they had taken care of me, and I said, hey, can I go write Indiana Jones too? They go, no! And I went, yeah, you're right. It was, it was, but then oh. they, then it didn't happen over there, and then it ended up being at Marvel, yeah. and I, I didn't do it. So Why there you go. Why but not? They, they haven't I, done it still, what? right? Yeah, they they never, haven't they done Indiana Jones it. yet. And I said, if, if, if it comes up, I'll, I'll raise my hand. And then, yeah. What's the thing that you would have wanted to make canon back then? Oh, uh, Indiana Jones, the whole OSS years, uh, the, mm. the spy years, all that stuff they hinted at in the... In, in, in the uh, uh, Crystal uh, Skull? The, yeah, that, that, that stuff. Oh, I want to go there. I kind of would like it if you just do the one where you never quite got out of the woods. Oh no! Yeah, no. I I'll be like selling a Blair that. Blair witchy kind yeah, of. Just uh, be kind yeah. of a a low of not. A, He's like chewing one of the, pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it felt very much like uh, Gus Van Sant's Jerry. It was just him walking around. <laughs> yeah. Yelling, you know, I forget the guy's name. Belloc. 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 Yeah. I was gonna Belloc. say Jerry. <laughs> yeah, they call each other Belloc. Yeah. <laughs> I've been looking through these uh, these papers that go, these papers that go along with the Grail Diary. Mm-hmm. I was very impressed that one of these has the crystal skull, a document about the crystal skull. Oh wow! And Our they, buddy Chris. And in, <laughs> these are all these are all in world. You know, there's maps and all these official government documents. And I really like that in the midst of all these very authentic pages, it's just a page of sheet music by John Williams for <laughs> for a piece called Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright 1984. So, wow. In the world of this, someone named John Williams wrote this instrumental piece. He, he was using the Amicathera, and he went forward, got that, right? That's the name of it. Or could we say it's like little boy John Williams witnesses sure. an act of daring to from in Indiana Jones? But if it's in 1984, 
you know, that doesn't, the math doesn't work. If it's copyrighted, oh, it is copyrighted. Fuck. Clearly, you guys haven't seen Dial of Destiny. Nothing matters anymore. In the Don't best way. Don't get me started. <laughs> I'll fight you right here. I love that movie. I do too. Love it. I like it. It's fun. Love it. You just said that nothing matters I, anymore. And then if you go back to the tape, I say in the best way possible. Okay. Great. You want to see Indiana Jones wearing sweatpants? <laughs> That's your movie. That's oh, right. I did want to see it and I saw it. It was what awesome. Would, what would you have the elderly Indiana Jones wear? Nice linen pajamas, like an Egyptian <laughs> cotton. Like, oh, he got these on his many travels. Hey, he's Indiana Jones. He's been around the world. He's gonna buy a nice like pair Willie of Like Willie Scott's days. pajamas yeah, and no, Temple no, of Doom. Like, uh, no, more like a, like a, something like a, like a, like a Cary Grant. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is pajamas. a great opportunity for you to Buck Rogers it a little bit. Why don't you write about an older archaeologist adventurer in his fancy pajamas? <laughs> Show the world what they missed. You get a point. If I do that, you're getting a point, buddy. I get a point? You get a point. I'll take a point. You know everybody, everybody here gets a point. Everyone gets a point. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. You wait, get wait. a point. There, and there you more? get a point. There's and you there, get a point. Unless there's more than 100 people, then I'm fucked. Well, no, <laughs> no, but you were very work. careful. You said, if I do that. Oh. Yeah, that <laughs> if carries a lot of weight in court. It's Got the classic the OJ master. carve it's out. The master. It's the master. Yeah. If I did it. Yeah. Yeah. People don't know that. If you say if I before anything, the law can't get you. Matt, did you ever want to do Star Wars stuff? Other than the TV show, but the comic stuff? Yeah, I think there probably would have been moments that I would have gone after it and said yes, and there most there were times when I wouldn't have. I, I think it all kind of depends. Also, when we were there, like Jason Aaron had started Star Wars, and, Kier- and our was, friend oh, Kieran. I was gone by then. I was gone. Our friend Kieran was doing so Darth I was Vader. Angry at all that stuff. I was angry at yeah, I get you. Mm-hmm. But but Kieran was kicking ass oh, yeah. on Darth Vader so hard mm-hmm. that you go, "Here's a master writer who's been thinking about this since they were ten, and I didn't have that story in me. Like 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 if that's the level of craft that's going into these, then get out of the way. They, they look, watch them go. Now, Kelly Sue, they come to you and they say you can write anything in Star Wars. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to write. Do you make something up? Do you go for an, an, a character? What is your What is your take on Star Wars? This is a gen- I really want to know what you would do with this. Uh oh! And you have to do it. <laughs> it's contracted. There's no I'm if. So it is sorry. only when. What, what is this it's contract? Like saw, it's a, a, a ironclad. This is a problem. Uh, yeah. N- no, I mean, I mean. When you signed the contract, you shouldn't have said you would do anything they said. It is a problem. Uh, Go ahead. It's okay. It's safe. safe. It's a safe space. No, it's really not. <laughs> I, I, I uh, uh, have. I, I'm not very familiar. But with that's what I'm. That's why I'm asking. Uh, there's the sarlacc. The, sarlacc. Uh, the I would uh, do something around the sarlacc great, pit. Great. Great. I just wanted to hear what your take on a Star Wars thing would be, even if it's a new idea. Uh, bras. Bras. That's yeah, George. Yeah. Sarlacc right. bras. Sarlacc bras. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, they good. should give the women bras. Yeah. And. Uh, that's good. Yeah. I think that's enough. Um, yeah. No, I like the, the, yeah, that, that's the, the, I like. Yeah. N- very n- not familiar. For sure. But I, okay. I would have bought okay. Sarlacc bras in the room. <laughs> like that, ti- that title alone, <laughs> we'll figure out what the story is. There's got to be something there. Well, their their oldest is uh, an aficionado of all things Star Wars. The Sarlacc uh, pit and the Sarlacc was a big part of his childhood. We mm. all listened at great length to the adventures yeah. of the Sarlacc. Well, so I painted it on his face once. Yeah. Well, <laughs> last night... He was going to go as a clone trooper, and by the time he got home from school, he changed his mind. He was like, Mom, can I just go as Star Wars? <laughs> and so he was a clone trooper, and she painted the Sarlacc on his face, and, and he had a lightsaber. And it was like, good. Yep, you're all Star wow. Wars, buddy. And he just was like, look, I'm Star Wars. And everyone's was like, really good. oh, wow, you are. Like, he also, he was really, really fond of the, um, what's the big monster called? The Rancor. The Rancor. Rancor. Mm. He we really literally, loved. literally just talking about it. He loved we the Rancor. Um, and so he would play that, the, the Star Wars Lego game, um, mm-hmm. and he figured out that if you turned into a droid, then the Rancor wouldn't eat you. And so he would only play that far into the game, would turn into a droid, and then would just hang out with his Rancor <laughs> friends. And you, and, and you, could, you could feed the Rancor. You, you, if you turn into a person, you could pull this, you push a button and, and like chicken would fall and the Rancor would eat it, and then you could turn back into a droid and he would just 
hang out with the Rancor. Yeah, there was no, no, no interest in finishing the game. Just, <laughs> just wanted to... But on the internet, I saw... We've been, listen, we've been talking about the Sharlock Pit now for 15 years because of Henry, right? Yeah. And someone online wrote, I can't believe they don't call it the sarcasm instead of the Sarlacc oh, Pit. Oh, God damn, that's yeah. good. That feels Can I have like a, a point? George Can I have like a point? Can I have a point? Yeah. Right. One point. Well, there also, there was a, at the at the at the <laughs> Disney thing. They've got the baby Sarlacc in yep. a box. Or a Galaxy's Edge. You're saying Galaxy's they Edge. sell they sell your own personal. No, no, Sarlacc. no. You can see it. It's, it's like it's a part of the museum yeah. gallery, and it's like. And I remember, and he and he investigated like, oh, huh. Okay. Like it, all board. of his questions were answered because he saw under the sand and understood mm. the shape of it and what it looked like. And I was like, oh, neat. All right. Now I got that. I can cross that off my mental list of stuff I got to figure out. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Star Wars. Now and I'm for real thinking about what I would do in Star that's Wars. I, and I'm mad at you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Join the club. Yeah, well, <laughs> we did, we did a, 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 a short in one of the anthology stories, one of the from a, another point of view or from a, a, yeah, a, certain, from point a of certain point of view. Took me a second, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, where we wrote this thing, we asked asked our son like, who, like, what's your favorite part? And it was the the, the cantina, mm-hmm. and so we wrote this story about the you know the, the one of the, uh, uh, the the one jizz player uh, mm-hmm. uh, who was having a heat stroke, so he doesn't have an instrument. He's just sitting down over the fan. <laughs> so we wrote a story about all of the different creatures that, it, that that you get cutaways of being involved in having stolen that guy's uh, space clarinet, whatever it was. And a uh, p- clue horn, yeah. thank you, yeah. uh, pawned it, and w- how the money worked through, and the, the devil guy ended up making a bet about who was going to shoot first when he detected the <laughs> thing. And this whole kind of a l- incredibly elaborate thing where you could read as though there was this sort of Danny Ocean style heist <laughs> of cantina losers happening around. Uh, uh, the events of, 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 of the cantina scene sequence in, in, in A New Hope. And the thing I was most happy that we got away with is when Obi-Wan and Luke arrived, one of the character, uh, one of the characters of the aliens notices uh, uh, Obi-Wan and an older gentleman and a, and a lovely young lady enter the bar. <laughs> and uh, that got through. I was, I, was, I was thrilled that that got through. But then I made B. Arthur canon because B. Arthur's the cool. character uh, from the holiday special is in it. She helps sober them up at the end. Are you happy about that, George? Well, now that we, well, here's the thing. I wasn't going to say this because, but I might as well, now that we brought jizz into it. Uh, the reason the Sarlacc Pit is not called the sarcasm is because, for those, who, I mean, this isn't anything. We have things in the archives that don't necessarily make it out into the DK guides, et cetera. The Sarlacc Pit, uh, the Sarlacc is a, a creature who is notoriously uh, difficult to satisfy sexually. Mm. <laughs> Though many have tried, many have tried, and in some cases, to the to the uh, the aggravation of the creature who just wants to like get them to go away and leave it alone, and so every now and then the sarlacc will have to um, fake uh, oh. uh, satisfaction, and that sure. is what a sarcasm is. Oh, wow! It's sort wow. of a derisive faked moment of sexual. Thank you for telling us that completion. Thank you for saving the bit. Yes. Yeah. And then and then uh, you It's not cu- a bit, it's just true. <laughs> We're just talking true things about Star Wars. Is there canon? You cut the Boba Fett standing to the side of the Sarlacc pit going, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we 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 cut it. It was it was in, then it was out, then it was back in, then it was yeah. out. It was in. George. We just couldn't decide whether it George. should be in the picture. Oh. What? Okay. What? Uh, everyone here. What? Well, everyone here's a grown up. I was just saying it for the sensitive people in the audience. No, we're fine. We're fine. Oh, it's the people that stayed after the blue poop story. Yes, yes, yes. yes. If they're still to here. Keep yeah. Portland weird, Patrick. I'm sorry that we couldn't continue your blue poop conversation, <laughs> Patrick. Me. I think yeah, we the blue poop got people texting their friends, "Get over here!" The blue poop story is <laughs> yes. happening. Yeah, yeah. It's happening. I'm more than happy to keep talking about jizz music. On. <laughs> okay, I have an answer for you, but it's I'm not. Okay, I was, I was sitting here and I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, well, you know, would I try to dance between raindrops here and like do sure. some small... It, no, I think that the thing that would be of interest to me would be uh, uh, yeah. or, or, uh, General Organo's yeah. story. I, I, I would... 
that there's that that old meme about how the Skywalker boys are weak. Sure. Um, because of everything that she's been through, and she's never been tempted by the dark side. Yeah. And I think that that's what I would do. That's I would do the. Yeah. I would do her story. That's cool. I I tell you what, if you went with the title, the Skywalker boys are weak. <laughs> I would approve. I think that's a <laughs> that is a gutsy title to yeah. go out, and I think I think there's a part of the fandom that really deserves to have that title <laughs> if, if, thrown at them. If they, you if you wrote that book, George would give you a signed letter saying <laughs> everything is, you're saying about the Skywalker boys is canon. I, I've good. never heard a twenty a 2024 title for Star Wars that is better than the Skywalker boys are weak. <laughs> but I mean, for real, you're right. Darth and you're Vader, right to say pe- it. People do not pick up on the fact that Darth Vader, who's known as the ultimate bad guy, spends most of the original trilogy screwing everything up. The Death Star blows up because his plan is bad. Everyone dies except for him, the person who said, no, don't keep them here at the Death Star. Wait for them to go back to their home base. And then he's the only one who doesn't die as a result of that. Yeah, no. They're all whiny and soft and up in their feelings. That's right. And they and they need to uh, toughen up. Yes. And get smart. Yes. Wow. That's how you become a fucking general. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you become a fucking. That's right. What a note to start to wrap up the show on. <laughs> Does anyone want to plug anything? Uh, promote things. Yes. Oh, I, Put uh, ideas out in the world that you would like to have happen or promote things that already... Mad like. Fraction has a new collection of sex criminals, the complete mm. sex criminals. Hell yeah. Yeah. Women, ships, <laughs> Hell yeah. Very I'm excited to get it. Copy of it. It's wonderful. I think it's out Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, it's this week, right? I think, I think. I was going to buy a copy to put on that table tonight, uh, and it's not out yet. I, yeah, I was going to bring some, and then I, like the lightsaber I was going to bring, I didn't. Yeah, that's okay. I'm blowing it, like a real fucking Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that catches on. Uh, Brian uh, just had a deal announced with uh, Amazon Studios, I believe. We are to Amazon. We're doing the Amazon. We're making the TV shows. We'll see what happens. Deal, 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 deal. And Kelly Sue's first new creator original series that she owns uh, in 10 years since Bitch Planet uh, uh, comes out August? November. November. It's called FML from Dark Horse. Cool. And it's good. I have read it. It's great. And and I just want to say Ghostbusters Frozen Empire $45 million opening weekend domestic. It's It's interesting. The last three have all opened basically to the exact same number. The most hated movie of the 21st century, weirdly, a movie that opened in deep pandemic and one that had no obstructions, 45, you could put anything in theaters called Ghostbusters, it won't make a dollar more or less. <laughs> but go see it, the empire is frozen. Uh, I, George, before, I should also say we have posters in the back, uh, Sam's back there, she's waving her hands, uh, a bunch of them are signed, we probably won't come out after this show, but if you stay for the later show, we'll come out and, and sign stuff for you. Uh, but are pick them up. Tickets they're still cool. available for later. I think show? there's still a couple tickets available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if okay. you want to hang around, hang around. We'd love to see ya. Well, thanks to our wonderful guests for joining us, and thank you to all of you for coming out in the rain. And may the force be with you always. Woo! Thank you. Thank you.